Hello. Welcome to getting started with PX4. This is a high level overview of how to get started with PX4 intended to accommodate several different levels of engagement. I'm Mark West. I'm a PX4 community volunteer. First a word about format. Um, we have about 10 minutes to go over a big subject. So we'll have a lot of abstraction and compression. Some subjects will be skipped. Some demos will be clipped, but don't worry. There's a lot of detail in the appendix. Okay, so let's get started. Who is this for? This presentation was written with contributors in mind to get them up to speed quickly. But this content will probably help anybody get started with PX4. So what do you want to do with PX4? Well, one might break down the knowledge domains into levels, each building upon the lower levels. Level one, operate a PX4 vehicle. Level two, build a PX4 vehicle. Level three, build the source. Level four, modify the source. And level five, contribute to the community. So level one, operate, skip, see appendix. Level two, build the vehicle, skip, see appendix. All right, level three, you want to build a PX4 image or executable from the source. This is a big step up in complexity from level two. Dev skills are very helpful. Before you get started, you need to make a choice. Will you install a tool chain or will you use containers? We will present both. Option one, use a tool chain to build. What is a tool chain? Well, a tool chain is all the stuff you need to build for a particular target. There are tool chains for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In our demo, we will use Ubuntu to build for a simulation that will run on Ubuntu. To use a tool chain, you need to first install it, obviously. You have a choice here, manual or convenience scripts. There are several convenience scripts and their use is recommended. See the appendix for details. Sometimes the scripts don't meet all your particular requirements though. For example, I work with Ross using some OpenCV features which must be built. They don't come in a distrib, so I have to build that. Therefore, I need to also build Ross up from source too. Therefore, I can't use the Ross convenience script. Same goes for Gazebo, sometimes. I run into so many problems with conflicting OpenCV that I always just install the whole chain manually. Uh, now everybody has to do that though. If you run into such things, uh, manual installation might be for you. Option two, using a container to build. So first you're gonna have to understand Docker containers. So according to the Docker website, quote, a container is a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies. So the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. End quote. Um, in many ways, a com container behaves like a VM, and you can effectively use them more or less like you would use a VM. Um, but there are, of course, differences, primarily that they use namespaces and C groups for isolation. Uh, don't worry about what that means. Um, containers are in very heavy use in the big clouds and are a popular way of distributing dev environments. They allow you, as a consumer, to plug and play very sophisticated environments which will not conflict with each other or with a host. Uh, you can elect to use the PX4 containers instead of installing and maintaining a PX4 toolchain because the toolchain is built into the container. Their use is recommended. Uh, now a word about nomenclature. Containers are stored in images. You don't download or store containers, you download or store images. When you run an image, it becomes a container. A uh, couple more things you need to know about containers. One is containers build upon other containers. Each layer contains all aspects of the parent layers. Uh, an important part of working with containers is figuring out which one you want to use. For example, the PX4 Dev ROS Melodic container adds ROS to PX4 Dev Simulation Bionic, which adds simulation to PX4 Dev Base Bionic, which adds a tool chain to the Ubuntu image. Another thing about containers, containers provide isolation. All, the, all of the interaction of the container with the host is prohibited, except as explicitly enabled by command line parameters. For example, it's very common for a directory in the user domain on the host to be mapped to a directory on the container through the v parameter. 
And it's also very common to open a network port via the P parameter. Okay. So you have to choose tool chain or container. Well, I suggest container if you can, otherwise install a tool chain. Um, one fine point on that, uh, more advanced container users can build up their own containers with whatever components they want and then snap to an image for storage or sharing. So with some work, you can use containers no matter how particular your needs. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, now we're going to run our first demo. We're going to demonstrate using a tool chain to build and run an XE for simul SIDL simulation. Don't worry if it goes too fast. The script is in the appendix. Step one, install the tool chain, not shown. Step two, create a directory for the PX4 source, then git. A lot of time compression here. Navigate to the firmware directory and then build PX4. If all goes well, a JMAP sim will appear and the console will open the PX4 shell. Give the shell a moment to initialize and take off. As you can see, sometimes it takes a moment for the simulator and the XE to spin up. So it might not be ready to take off right away. Try again. Eventually it will be ready unless something is broken. Okay, so in our case, the drone can't see a data link and immediately goes into return to home mode. This is correct behavior because we have not yet configured a data link. We'll leave that exercise for another demo. And there we are. All right, demo two. Here we're gonna demonstrate using a container to build. Step one, install Docker, not shown. Step two, create a directory for the PX4 source, then git. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some uh, containers while that's getting. Go to the PX4 container GitHub and select your container. We're gonna use PX4 div simulation bionic. Click on that link. Notice the Docker pull command. We're going to copy the name of the container there. All right, now run the container with the Docker run command. Don't worry about that format. It's, it's detailed in the appendix. At this point, the container images will download, install, and run. Your prompt will change, which indicates that you're now running in the container. Notice that prompt. Navigate to the share in the container and build PX4. The conventional build process commences. When complete, the build directory will be present on the share on the host. So look over there in the directory. See, that was just created. You can exit the host or leave it running. Okay, now we've got level four, modify the source. This is a step up in complexity from level three. Dev skills are pretty much required and you will in many cases need to understand the architecture of PX4. Why would you do this? Well, the most common scenarios would be to add features and to fix bugs. Um, <clears throat> the standard dev loop applies here. You edit, build, debug, edit, you know, fix, build, debug. At this level, many devs find an IDE to be very helpful. Some don't, some do. Religions are founded on this and wars are fought over this. I prefer to use an IDE, so we will demo with an IDE. Some IDEs are known to work well with PX4. Visual Studio Code, Eclipse, Qt Creator. There are others, I'm sure. For PX4 work, I prefer Visual Studio Code on Ubuntu. So that's what we will demo. 
All right. So here we demonstrate building and debugging with an IDE. Create a directory for the PX4 source, then get. You notice Visual Studio Code is already installed and open. Now open the PX4 folder. A lot of config will happen. Wait, don't break out. If you get frustrated and break out early, it will just require code to restart in order to move forward. All right, if PX4 Detect is not your active kit, then change to PX4 Detect. Wait for config to finish. Next, we're going to want to select the build variant. We'll use PX4 Siddle for that. There we go. Wait for config to finish. Now click build. The standard build ensues. If problems happen, then messages will be seen. <clears throat> sometimes the problem tab is the best view, sometimes output tab is the best view. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to start debugging. We're going to go into our code and set a breakpoint on an executable line in main.cpp. This is the general entry point. There we go. Now click on the debug icon in the left horizontal toolbar, and then click on the start debug green triangle in the upper left drop down. Sometimes you get errors, especially on the first debug build. You can try to run anyway, but sometimes that doesn't work. It just kind of hangs. In that case, restart code and debug again. Yeah. So now we're going to debug again. Click on that green, green triangle, <clears throat> and if all is well, you should see a build, a startup sequence, and code halting on the breakpoint. At this point, you can single step, add and remove breakpoints, inspect variables, all the standard stuff. All right, so now we'll break out of debugging. Okay, so there's a lot more to debugging than this. Um, we just don't have time for all that. that, that that's for another video. Uh, I'll just mention a few things you might want to look into, and then you can expand from there. One, simulation in both hardware and software, so you can fly without flying. You already got a taste of that in the JMAP sim in the first demo. Uh, two, the PX4 console. Three, uh, various logs that are generated. And four, uh, JTAG if you need to get closer to the hardware. All of these things are, uh, are expanded in the appendix. Okay, <clears throat> level five. Now you're looking at <clears throat> contributing. Uh, we're going to break away from the pure tech talk here, and now you can step up to give back to the px4 community what kind of things can you do to help well you can add features to the code you can fix the code um, or you can add non-code content like this presentation for example um, you can conduct test flights there's always a need for that and currently there's a great need for that you can report bugs you find uh, if possible debug and provide analysis for those bugs um, there are all kinds of things, um, so ask around. Uh, there are a few levels and channels for engagement. Um, it's the appendix for those. Okay, so we reached the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to refer to the appendix for skip subjects, details, and demo scripts.